Yeah, what's up? This your boy JT, the bigger figure. And right now, y'all tapped in with the Tesla, man. Subscribe below and hit the bell. You dig? Once I learned how to create players in the game by myself, 94 was the beginning of me doing 10 albums was my goal. To complete for 94, so that my 95 could actually be great. I was thinking a year ahead, and I wanted to outwork, so I wanted to get albums out on Demo the Youngs, the Septa Gap, and the San Quentin, GLP, JT the Bigger Figure, Rich the Factor, uh, compilations. Uh, the ones that stand out, oh, and what we known for, that's another one. You know, these projects stand out for 94 as the year that got everyone their deals. Based on what took place in 94 from RBO Posse, JT, Delinquents, uh, Master P, uh, uh, Souls of Mischief actually went through 93 till infinity. Yeah, them niggas was already big time. So they was job. That was through the Spice One line. You know, the trap flicks came about because I got my deal as planned in 95 based on a stream amount. I said, what is the chance that I could put an album out every month from my new studio in my house? Shit, I ain't paying studio time and I'm making the beats and I'm the engineer. All I need is a rapper to come rap. I got beats already made. So I can be, give me a deal like Dr. Dre and Easy e and I fuck around got a deal the next year with Priority Records, Dr. Dre, Easy e God damn it, dream come true. Should Knight, Snoop Dogg, Brother Lynch got signed over there. Master P is there. Yeah, and then they signed a couple more Bay Area people, you know. But Trap Flicks is a similar story. And imagine 1994, I did 10 albums and then 2014, 20 years exactly. I'm the first person to do 10 films in one year. And on the last day, December 28th, 2014, I started Trap Flix as an app streaming company beating Jay Z, Dame Dash, all them niggas. And I own my codes, patents, and trademarks. The app, the website, I'm the one made the movie, I'm the actor, I paid for it, I edit this shit, I'm amazing. I don't care who else says it, I know it. Why? Because rich white people call my phone now with the utmost respect, wondering about the contents and the acquisition and the numbers to make the transaction solidified in the letter of intense LOIs. Are you familiar with that, people? Don't be so quick, because they saying some millions. Hold on, might be worth a hundred, and you about to do a deal for three. I seen it happen. I'm thirsty for them three right now. Right motherfucking now. For some shit that I shot with a motherfucking phone, I'll be an idiot not to take the deal. Yeah, but what do five sound like? You know, just in case the deal could have been worth a hundred, but five, it sound better than three, you know? Yeah, you went out, bro. Them folk took your masters and went and turned around and did a deal with goddamn it. Why they offer you money? Why, if you think now? Okay, I'm thinking, nigga, what I'm thinking for? Because every deal based on buy low, sell high. Or a forecast about what you got in own is about to be a big revenue stream based on owners with masters. Oh shit, what are you talking about? Yeah, this is the same thing when IOTA got formed. 2005, 2004. I didn't know what the fuck an iTunes was. All I know is them folk kept coming to me talking about, look, I know you deal with priority over. I know you deal with cuts, it's over. RBC. It's over. No more. Over. Select on his. Over. Sing y'all. Over. Music people. Over. JT on all his masters. JT sitting on 100 some records in 2006. Masters. I turned that shit in. I turned that shit into IOTA. And they promised me we can't give you no money up front. But I made them give me 5000 Don't fuck that. Give me 5000 in my pockets or something. Cause I'm finna trust y'all with my masters. Yeah, we finna, it's something called streaming money and download money, it begins now. You give us the masters, every 30 days you're gonna get paid. Your checks are gonna grow tremendously. 
I guarantee. Yeah, well, that sound like a promise from the record industry, boy. If this shit don't go right, boy, I'm coming back to this office, boy. Uh, you'll be back, but you won't be back for that. You'll be back to drop more records off. God damn it, the motherfucker didn't lie. I've been getting a check every month since 2006 based on owning all my masters. I never did an administration publishing deal with nobody so I could publish it myself too. Yeah, it's a cold motherfucker. So, so trap flicks. And here's the catcher. I got a deal with Sony and Orchard and Empire. Guess what? It ain't a deal for my master ownership, though. It's a deal for licensing and profit splitting, profit sharing. They provide a platform, they take a fee, and goddamn it, give me the change. That's how I post it. Okay. YouTube just did some more shit that's different from Netflix. I presented my shit to Netflix. Netflix offered me $5,000 of film and said I can't do nothing with my films for five years. I threatened them people and told them, fuck you motherfucking boy, because it was a level of disrespect. In basically their last phase of dealing with niggas, they start making their own movies because the Curtis Snow, Snow on the Bluff movie, was the cheapest movie made that had the highest ratings. Zero dollars spent, about 20,000 tops. 20,000 tops. Netflix banked on the shock value film and kept that bitch on the front page. Did you notice that? Yeah, that motherfucker slow in the bluff. Bam, right there. Yeah. Well, why am I saying that? Well, they robbed Curtis Snow for part one, and I said for part two, I shot that buddy. I own them masters. I'm not finna get robbed like that. I'd rather just... Because that was what I had my hopes in. I did it all year thinking we finna go to them, and then they like, no, we finna rob you niggas too. And I'm like, yo, bro, that's like the JT no-no. You know you about to get robbed, and you're not volunteering. Let me say that again. Do you know it's a way to get robbed and be okay with it? It's called a pre-robbery. Pre-thought robbery. What's that? I just made these masters on my iPad. Somebody finna buy them for $20,000. It took me seven days to make it for fun, having fun in my room, smoking burning weed, and now that I'm done. I'd be a fool just to cash out 100%, but there's a value right now of at least fifteen, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000 for this project right now. There's so much you know, I could tell y'all, but the Traplix thing was amazing because it was my thought process. Who never made an app before or a streaming company before? And then makes an app that's a streaming app, original app, monetized, uh, monthly subscription, yearly subscription, okay? And then make all the films. I'm so hungry for product creation. It's just the same hunger of music from back in the days of, man, I gotta make the next album. Visuals is the new rap game. If you niggas ain't noticed, a Joe Blow with a cheap movie right now, I outdo your album with nigga Mozzie on it, E-40 on it, YG on it. Who else shit, nigga, God damn it. Bathgate on it, nigga, San Quinn on it. Put all of it, and put, put Messy Marble on there too. This motherfucker right here with this little cheap ass movie. Just killed your whole album, my nigga. He more famous than you. Do this cheap movie based upon the repetition of watching that motherfucker as long as he got a gun, some dope, a bitch, a nigga, a police, some blood, a project, a helicopter, a jail cell, a corner store, a studio. Is it a real place? Is it something that's verifiable? Boy, we want to see that again, because boy, I ain't been up in there. Nigga, watch that movie again. Meanwhile, your album playing in the background is the weakest album ever, but we watching this movie and we don't care that your album. But I actually started to like the motherfucker now. You know, when you killed the nigga right there, see how you remember shit by when the movie, when you fucked the bitch, when that song was playing, and then when the police was chasing you, the other song, I say these motherfuckers is time stamping a song and that's how they know which song they like by what happened. That is what's in my inbox. Oh. Uh, fucking formula of the new way to market. Let's do the fucking movie and put your album cover in the movie somewhere. 
play your real song. If you sell cupcakes, put the cupcakes in that motherfucker. If you a barber, then let's see the nappy head and then the head after. That's the JT way. That means that barber could forever be the one. Boy, you cut fig head nice in that one, boy. I'm watching the barber right now, shining right now. You the one cut the head in, in, in the movie? Man, go and cut me up, bro, right, man. Yeah, you cut fig head, man. Come on. I say marketing at his finest. The dudes who got the clothing, I can help you get sales by saying something like this, guys. My man at Bay Blood got the motherfucking hoodies for $32. He retelling them bitches for 80. He retelling them for 125. Boy, we need to go and get in right now, nigga, and spend at least three bands with this boy and go and get us a load. And we going to flip off the Bay Blood. Man, I think we should do that, bro. Nah, because, you know, they got the dope air out, bro. That shit ain't going to sell. Nah, nigga, we doing this. Man, what about cookies, bro? Fuck that. We doing this one. Three bands. He giving us the deal. They not. We finna close the deal. We get the pack. We see that pack dissolve and money transact. Whether it's real or fake or not, it don't fucking matter if it's in the movie. It's real. In 94, I realized after being in the rap game for two years that I got to do something phenomenal right now. Whatever it is, I don't know why it was the year 94, but I told myself after completing players in the game, an album I produced in my house by myself, brought in keyboard player for little parts I couldn't play. Got a little assistance on how to line my little shit up, but other than that, nigga, this is JT doing this because I want to have the fucking credit so my career can start. You listen? Yeah. And it's like I'm listening back. I'm talking. That's how I do my thing. My interviews is interactive. The angle of products in a way that you can monetize your product in a way you cross, cross collateralize. Is that the word? How you say that? Cross collateralize. That means that you take the benefits and the losses on both sides and just run that shit across, you know what I mean? Take all your losses and put them over there together. <laughs> you lost on each side, so put them all over there and put all your gains over there. The music and the clothing is a product. The film is allowing us to put our products and our music in a film that they gonna watch more than they listen to your motherfucking album. It could be a documentary about... Uh, and when I say documentary, I mean film. I shot Snow on the Bluff too with this. I'm talking about the whole thing. And I'm talking about when I realized that I turned this phone sideways and it pop up on a big screen. I don't care if it's an 80 inch. That motherfucker looked like it's a big time movie camera to me. Yeah, and everybody say, boy, that look great. Camera's shaking, that's what they want. If your shit's staying, if it's clear, mm -mm. If it's just two, you, you an actor movie. You CB4. You know that movie that came out with, uh, where they was trying to be like N.W.A., but they were mocking them? Yeah, your movies right now, don't be the robotic movie and don't be the cookie cutter movie. The, the revenge got the bag stolen and the kilo and got to go find a nigga before deadline and my brother getting out of jail, my baby mama. Now, I know I done it. And some of my storylines come from things I've seen in other films and things that make sense and what I see really happening in the hood. I want to show the raw scandalousness of the thought process of a fuck nigga. There's never been no one to even try that. Yeah, T.I. just called Floyd Mayweather a fuck nigga and I got a whole package, a whole series about me being a fuck nigga. And I'm not versus Mayweather. I would never do what he did. That's not, he can't be no fuck nigga. That's something else. That is a fucking, you know, in the near future, the things we'll see, we'll know what is tied to them statements. Yeah, I'm in the technology now, man. My friends work at Apple. They telling me, God damn it, you hold on, Fee, get some shit, finna hit them apps, and you about to be able to do a lot of shit yourself and tell motherfucker, fuck you, boy, I'm my own graphic designer, I'm doing my own motion editing. Yeah. 
God damn it, I got an Apple pen, motherfucker, for a hundred and something dollars I could draw and it draw for me. Sorry about that. I'm a technology nigga now. I like to sell people graphics. Uh, Shemp, eat your heart out. I got a pen now, buddy. Yeah, photo doctor graphic. Shout out to me being the only motherfucker that Shemp, since he was charging a lot. I spent 5000 with Shemp to make me a book. Everybody laughed at me called Black Wall Street, CEO manual. He said, I'll charge you 5000 I said, okay, I want this book to be about the independent game and I want to put chapters and phone numbers and diagrams and information about what JT do and how I built his empire. It's 2002, same year that I found the game, the rapper. Same year now. But I do this Black Wall Street shit first because Far kind of one gave us the fucking name. Said, man, I need y'all to go look up Black Wall Street. If y'all did that in the rap community and circulate y'all dollars, y'all will have plenty of money. So I started testing it out, and the first rapper I met was The Game, and that's what, and I met The Game with Farrakhan at the Hip Hop Summit out of 400 rappers. Now, what is God trying to tell me? Because there's some amazing shit going on. Either I'm the luckiest executive, or shit that I be seeing and saying it come true. Either I'm lucky, but it's a history that you could check. Either he was lucky, or somebody whispered something to him. The independent game was something I was told 30 years ago, don't sign your rights over whatever you do, you wait. When you sign your rights over, it's supposed to be retirement money, just in case the deal don't never come back and you never recoup a cash advancement of significance. Because sometimes that's just to buy your masters and get you out the way.